Welcome to the next lecture on synchronous machine scores. In the previous lecture, we discussed about EMF equation of alternator and also we solved few numerical questions related to EMF equation. Now let us move to the next concept that is armature reaction in synchronous machine. Okay. So let us first understand what is this armature reaction and what are the effects of armature reaction. So, uh, coming to the point in synchronous machine uh, there will be two main windings okay one will be on the rotor part another one will be on the stator part the winding which is available on the rotor part is called as a field winding and that field winding will be excited using dc supply okay so see here this is the main field winding and this dc supply will be given to field winding and that current is called as field current and whatever the flux is developed by this winding we will call it as field flux. Now this field flux will cross the air gap and will link armature winding which is available on the stator part of the machine okay. Armature winding will be available on the stator part of the machine and armature winding is a three phase balanced distributed winding and in most of the cases armature winding is a star connected circuit. So see here we have the armature circuit of the given synchronous machine. Now when we gave DC supply to the field winding, field winding will create a flux called as main field flux. That main field flux will cross air gap and will link stator winding. Therefore, an EMF will be induced across stator winding and that induced EMF is called as field induced EMF. Okay. Why the name is given as field induced EMF? Because this EMF is induced due to the presence of field flux. Okay. Now, coming to the point, this is armature circuit of the synchronous machine. And that armature in, uh, circuit has an induced EMF called as field induced EMF. Suppose if a load is connected on this armature circuit, what happens? A three phase balanced load is connected. The moment when a load is connected, immediately this induced EMF will generate a current and that current is called as armature current. Therefore, stator winding is now a normal winding or current carrying winding, current carrying winding. Whenever armature winding is carrying armature current, it will create its own magnetic field called as armature flux. Therefore, initially the machine has only main field flux. Now, the moment when the load is connected, armature current will generate and that armature current will create one more magnetic field called as armature flux and the effect of that armature flux on main field flux is what we will call it as armature reaction. Suppose if load is not connected then what is the magnitude of armature current? Zero. If armature current is zero there won't be any armature flux then only main field flux will present in the machine. But armature reaction concept will come into picture only when load is connected to the stator part of the machine. The moment when the load is connected immediately current will be generated and that generating armature current will create a flux called as armature flux. The effect of that armature flux on main field flux is what we will call it as armature reaction. So therefore there are two windings available one is field winding another one is armature winding. This field winding will be excited using a DC current called as field current. That field current will create an MMF called as field MMF because MMF is number of turns into current and this field MMF will create a flux called as field flux. Understand? Similarly coming to the other side. The moment when armature circuit is connected to load immediately armature winding will generate a current called as armature current. This armature current will develop an MMF called as armature MMF and that MMF will create a flux called as armature flux. 
Now, the effect of this armature flux on main field flux is what we will call it as armature reaction. Armature reaction means the effect of armature flux on main field flux. You can give one more definition also for armature reaction. The effect of armature MMF on main field MMF is also called as armature reaction. We can give any definition here. The effect of armature flux on main field flux or the effect of armature MMF on main field MMF. Okay. So that is the basic definition for armature reaction. Therefore, under loaded condition, how many fluxes will be available in the machine? Two fluxes. One is main field flux, another one is armature flux. Therefore, if I ask you what is the resultant flux, definitely that will be the sum of main field flux and armature flux together, that will be the resultant flux. Okay. Before going to discuss about armature reaction, I wanted to discuss an important point that is the relation between MMF and flux. We know the basic relation between flux and MMF is, all of us know that, flux is equal to MMF by reluctance, right? But in rotating electrical machine, the medium between stator and rotor is air gap. Therefore, this is reluctance of air gap. Okay. Why reluctance of air gap only is written? Because the core medium reluctance is always negligible compared to air gap reluctance. And we also know that air gap reluctance is always proportional to length of air gap. Okay. Now you tell me an important point here. Suppose if the machine is a cylindrical rotor machine. Cylindrical rotor machine means, imagine this is the stator part of the machine, then rotor is going to be a cylindrical structure. Okay, therefore, the air gap between stator and rotor is uniform or non-uniform? Uniform. That means, can I say, air gap length is constant throughout the surface of the machine? If air gap length is constant, reluctance is also constant. If reluctance is constant, I can write flux is proportional to MMF. Yes or not? And what is the formula for MMF? Number of turns into current. Once a construction is completed, number of turns are constant. Therefore, flux is proportional to current ultimately. Because number of turns are constant. So, field flux will be proportional to field current. Armature flux will be proportional to armature current. That's all. This is for which machine? Cylindrical rotor machine. That means I can conclude that in case of cylindrical rotor machine, flux and MMF are proportional to each other. Suppose if MMF phasor is at an angle 0 degrees, flux phasor will also be at an angle 0 degrees. If current phasor is at an angle 0 degrees, then flux phasor is also at an angle 0 degrees. All are proportional to each other. But let us consider a salient pole rotor synchronous machine. If I consider a salient pole rotor synchronous machine, you know what is the physical structure of a salient pole machine. This is how a salient pole machine looks like. Therefore, along polar axis, nothing but direct axis, the air gap length is minimum. Along interpolar axis, that is a quadrature axis, the air gap length is maximum. Therefore, air gap length is not uniform throughout the surface of the rotor. As the air gap length is not uniform, I cannot take air gap length constant. If air gap length is not constant, reluctance is also not constant. If reluctance is not constant, this relation cannot be valid. When flux is proportional to MMF, only when air gap reluctance is constant. But in salient pole machine, along every axis, reluctance is not same. Therefore, I cannot take reluctance constant along every axis of the machine. If reluctance is not constant, flux and MMF are not proportional to each other. Not proportional to each other. Therefore, if I say MMF is at an angle 0 degrees, you cannot conclude flux is at an angle 0 degrees. In that case, we have to use two reaction theory model. We will discuss very soon, okay? Two reaction theory model we will use since flux and MMF are not proportional to each other. Why flux and MMF are not proportional since reluctance is not constant along the air gap of the machine. That's why I can conclude that in case of a salient pole machine, 
MMF and flux are not proportional to each other. Always flux will lag MMF. Flux will lag MMF. Okay. What is the reason for that? Non-uniform reluctance. Okay. We will conclude this point once we go to, you know, two reaction theory model. But right now you need to remember this. This is the problem in which machine? Salient pole machine. In a cylindrical rotor machine, air gap is uniform, therefore reluctance is constant. That means flux will be in phase with MMF. In cylindrical rotor machine, what is the conclusion? Flux is in phase with in phase with MMF. In phase with MMF. But in a salient pole rotor machine, flux will always lag MMF. There will be a finite lagging angle between MMF and flux. Understand? Why flux is lagging MMF means the reason is non-uniform air gap. But in cylindrical rotor machine, flux is always in phase with MMF. So these two points are very important for me to analyze armature reaction concept in say, you know, uh, synchronous machine. So first I will assume the machine is cylindrical rotor type. Then I will analyze armature reaction. And to understand the armature reaction in salient pole machine, we have to consider two reaction theory model. So the initial discussion is armature reaction in cylindrical rotor synchronous machine where flux and MMF are always in phase with each other. Understand? Okay. So let us start our discussion. Okay. Let us first try to study about armature reaction in a cylindrical rotor synchronous generator. Cylindrical rotor means air gap is uniform, flux is proportional to MMF. Now, always there are two ways to learn about armature reaction of synchronous machine. One is by using a phasor diagram, another one is by using a physical diagram. Understanding with respect to physical diagram is always very difficult. So what I will do is, I will try to study about armature reaction with respect to phasor diagram initially. And then I will show you physically how to understand armature reaction shape. Okay. All right. So before learning about armature reaction, first I must understand what is the phase angle difference between flux and EMF. For that purpose, I will try to use Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. The same I used in transformer also. And we concluded that induced EMF is always lagging the flux by 90 degrees. I hope you remember that. Let me try to do that derivation once again. We know that induced EMF is equal to minus n into d phi by dt. You remember this formula, right? And we are assuming a flux is a purely sinusoidal. That means only fundamental harmonic I am taking. Therefore, the equation for field flux is equal to uh, phi m sin omega t. Okay, right. Substitute that flux here, therefore minus n into d by dt of phi m sin omega t. Isn't it? And what is the derivation for sin omega t? It will be cos omega t. Isn't it? And I can write cos omega t as simply sin 90 minus omega t. And there is always a minus sign here representing the existence of Lenz law. And you can write minus sin theta as simply, uh, don't forget there will be omega also here. Yes, omega into sin omega t minus 90. This is going to be the induced EMF equation according to Faraday's law. Therefore, if you look at these two equations, this is the flux equation and this is the induced EMF equation. So what is our understanding here? Flux is proportional to sin omega t. Omega t, I can write plus 0 degrees. But induced EMF is proportional to sin omega t minus 90 degrees. That means indirectly, flux is at an angle 0 degrees. Induced EMF is at an angle minus 90 degrees. That shows that induced EMF is always lagging the flux by how many degrees? 90 degrees. Therefore, you see this phasor diagram. Imagine this is the field flux phasor. Assume this is reference, okay, 0 degrees. Then this field flux developed by field winding will cross air gap and induces an EMF in armature winding that is called as a field induced EMF. 
according to this relation induced emf is lagging the flux by how many degrees 90 degrees lagging means clockwise or anti clockwise clockwise right you just move in clockwise direction by 90 degrees this is going to be the field induced emf okay it is at an angle minus 90 degrees you understand my point so induced emf is always lagging the flux by 90 degrees Suppose if you assume induced EMF is at an angle 0 degrees, then field flux will be at an angle plus 90 degrees. Okay. So induced EMF is lagging the flux by 90 degrees or flux is leading the EMF by 90 degrees. Both are similar statements. Understand? This is the basic understanding that we should have. And this flux is called as field flux. And that field flux is developed by rotor winding, but that will induce EMF in stator winding. This is the induced EMF in stator winding. This is a flux developed by rotor winding. Understand? So induced EMF is lagging the flux by 90 degrees. So once we understand the phase angle relationship between flux and EMF, we can understand about armature reaction now. Okay? As alternator is generating AC power, we have to study armature reaction for different types of load power factors. Okay. First, we will consider a lagging power factor load. Next, we will consider a leading power factor load. Then we will consider a unity power factor load as well. Okay. So let me take the first case. Okay. First case. Case number one. Yes. Generator feeding. Generator feeding. A purely inductive load. Okay, generator feeding a purely inductive load. Can you tell me purely inductive load means current will lag the voltage by how many degrees? 90 degrees. Current is lagging the voltage by 90 degrees means what is the power factor? So indirectly power factor is equal to cos 90 lagging. Cos 90 lagging means indirectly this is zero power factor lagging. We will simply call it as ZPF lagging. Cos 90 is equal to zero. So we will try to study the effect of armature reaction for a purely inductive load where power factor is ZPF lagging. Okay. So first let me try to draw the phasor diagram. All right. Look at the phasor diagram now. Always we are taking main field flux as reference. This is main field flux or you can also consider as main field MMF. Why flux and MMF are in phase with each other? Because it is a cylindrical rotor machine. So flux and MMF. MMF will be represented by a letter F. Both are in phase with each other. Okay. So for simplicity point of view, I wanted to represent with flux phasor. Okay. In case if you want MMF, that will also be in the same direction. Okay. Now, this is the main field MMF, I mean main field flux. We discussed already induced EMF is always lagging this flux by 90 degrees. Okay, so see this. This is the field induced EMF, lagging the flux by 90 degrees. Okay, now the moment when the load is connected, this EMF in armature winding will generate a current called as armature current. And as the load is purely inductive, that armature current will lag this voltage by 90 degrees. Because this is the voltage which is generating armature current. So therefore, as load is purely inductive type, current generated by armature circuit will lag this voltage by 90. Always remember, lagging means just move in clockwise direction by 90 degrees. So, this is voltage phasor, therefore armature current will lag this voltage by exactly 90 degrees. So, this is the direction of armature current, okay, 90 degrees lagging, current is lagging the voltage by 90 degrees. Now, if this is the phase for armature current, can I say armature MMF will also be in the same phase? This is armature MMF because MMF is equal to number of turns into current. Number of turns are always constant. So MMF is always proportional to current. Next, this is the phasor for armature MMF. If this is the phasor for armature MMF, then what about the phasor for armature flux? Same. 
why flux is in phase with the mmf because i told you we are talking about a cylindrical rotor machine where flux and the mmf are proportional to each other okay so see this this is the direction of main field flux and this is the direction of armature flux so tell me armature flux is in the direction of main field or exactly opposite direction exactly opposite direction that is what we will call it as demagnetization nature okay so therefore armature flux is purely demagnetizing main field flux okay yes purely demagnetizing can you tell me because of that demagnetization resultant flux will be reduced or increased reduced if resultant flux reduces what about resultant emf also reduces now can you tell me what will be the phase r for resultant flux you see let us say main field flux is 100 percent armature flux is let us say 20 or 30 percent that is exactly opposite then the resultant flux will be this is 100 opposite direction 20 then the resultant flux will be somewhere around 80 right so let me draw the resultant phase r now this is going to be the resultant flux phi r what phi r is representing resultant flux what about the opposite direction flux this is a phi a armature flux see main field flux opposed by armature flux therefore resultant flux is reduced if you know this is resultant flux then what about resultant emf don't forget that always induced emf is lagging the corresponding flux by how many degrees 90 degrees so if this black color line is resultant flux resultant emf will lag this flux by 90 degrees therefore this is going to be resultant emf er can you tell me what is mean by er er is the induced emf in armature circuit due to resultant flux what about ef ef is induced emf in armature circuit due to main field flux then what about induced emf due to armature flux there are three fluxes now see main field flux armature flux resultant flux main field flux induces main field emf ef resultant flux induces resultant emf er then armature flux should induce armature emf in the machine right or not armature flux induces emf in armature winding that means which emf it is please try to concentrate these theoretical concepts you need to understand very uh, carefully that's why synchronous machine is called as a little difficult subject because the only thing is you have to use your brain otherwise this is also an easy subject only where you need to use your brain subject becomes difficult that's all but if you logically think it will become easy main field flux induces an emf ef resultant flux induces an emf er that means armature flux should induce one emf first of all armature flux is developed by which winding armature winding and that flux is inducing an emf in which winding armature winding only armature flux induces an emf in armature winding only therefore can i say that is nothing but self induced emf and always remember induced emf will be lagging the flux by how many degrees 90 degrees lagging means from the flux i must rotate in clockwise direction or anti clockwise direction clockwise direction so see arrow mark for armature flux this is the direction of armature flux now the emf induced by the help of armature flux will lag this flux by 90 see i am moving in clockwise direction clockwise direction this is the induced emf due to armature flux that is what we will call it as e a r can you tell me what is mean by e a r e a r is nothing but induced emf in armature winding due to armature flux okay let me write all the uh, you know terminologies here first tell me what is ef induced emf in which winding armature winding due to which flux due to field flux am i right field flux next what is ear 
induced emf in armature winding due to which flux armature flux okay then what is er this is induced emf in armature winding due to which flux resultant flux resultant flux is sum of both main field and armature flux together and what is our final observation here armature flux is exactly opposite to main field flux that is what we will call it as complete demagnetization okay so the nature of armature reaction is purely demagnetization in nature okay and these are the corresponding induced emfs now will you tell me suppose if machine is not connected to any load then what is the only emf that will be available if a machine is not connected to any load can i say armature current is zero if armature current is zero armature flux is zero if armature flux is zero induced emf due to armature flux also becomes zero then only main field flux will be available in that case main field flux is equal to resultant flux when main field emf and resultant emf both are different only when the load is connected the moment when the load is connected armature current will generate armature flux will generate therefore resultant flux is not only main field flux it is main field flux plus armature flux but that armature flux is magnetizing main field or demagnetizing demagnetizing main field understand okay so this is observation of armature reaction for a purely inductive load okay now let us understand uh, what is the effect of armature reaction when the load is purely capacitive type okay all right now the next observation is generator feeding a purely capacitive load can you tell me purely capacitive load means current will lead the voltage by how many degrees 90 degrees current will lead the voltage by 90 degrees therefore can you tell me what is the power factor of the load cos 90 degrees leading we know cos 90 is equal to zero indirectly this is zero power factor leading also called as simply zpf leading okay when the alternator is connected to purely capacitive load so the power factor is zpf leading now let us try to draw the phase r diagram once again so always we are taking main field flux as reference okay main field flux we know induced emf is always lagging this flux by 90 degrees lagging means i just move in clockwise direction from the flux wave leading means you have to move in anti clockwise direction very fine now this induced emf in armature winding will generate a current the moment when the load is connected what kind of load is connected purely capacitive load is connected therefore the current generated by this emf will lead this voltage by 90 degrees so this is the voltage phasor leading means clockwise or anti clockwise yes from the voltage phasor you have to move in anti clockwise direction by 90 degrees so therefore this is the phasor for armature current okay let me uh, represent with a different color yes this is armature current armature current is leading the voltage by 90 degrees very clear if this is armature current direction then can i say this is going to be armature mmf direction because mmf will be in phase with current and we are talking about a cylindrical rotor machine if this is armature mmf direction then can i say this is going to be armature flux direction as well therefore you tell me now main field flux and armature flux both are in phase with each other or out of phase with each other exactly in phase with each other therefore both will aid with each other that is what we will call it as magnetization so the nature of armature reaction is purely magnetizing in nature okay purely magnetizing in nature it is a purely magnetizing means tell me now resultant flux is main field flux plus armature flux therefore the resultant flux will increase or decrease increase because both are in same direction so let me draw this is main field flux now armature flux is also in the same direction of main field flux therefore the resultant is a sum of the two so let me draw with black color line 
Yes, this is going to be the resultant flux of IR. If this is the resultant flux, then what about resultant EMF? Resultant EMF will lag this resultant flux by how many degrees? 90 degrees. So see, this is going to be resultant EMF, ER. Tell me, ER is more or EF is more? ER is more. Why? Because phi R is more than phi F. Then, what about induced EMF due to armature flux? I told you, induced EMF will always lag the flux by 90 degrees. This is armature flux. Then, can I say induced EMF will lag this flux by 90 degrees? This is flux. EMF should lag this flux by 90. I told you, lagging means clockwise. So, armature flux lagging this flux by 90 degrees. That is what I am drawing here. This is induced EMF due to armature flux. Okay. So, EF is induced EMF in armature winding due to main field flux. EAR induced EMF in armature winding due to armature flux. ER induced EMF in armature winding due to resultant flux. That is the sum of main field and armature. And it is a purely magnetizing effect. Magnetizing means armature flux will be aiding with main field. Therefore, resultant flux increases. When resultant flux increases, what about resultant voltage also increases? That means it is offering rise in voltage or drop in voltage. Rise in voltage. Rise in voltage. What about zero power factor lagging that we discussed in the previous case? When the load is purely lagging type, armature reaction is purely demagnetizing in nature. Demagnetizing means resultant flux will decrease. Resultant flux decreases means induced EMF will also decrease. That is representing drop in voltage. But this is rise in voltage. Okay. So the nature of armature reaction will always depend upon the type of load power factor. Is it lagging power factor load or is it leading power factor load? Now let me consider case number 3. What happens if the power factor is purely resistive type? That is unity power factor condition. Okay. Alright. Now let us come to the third case. What happens if generator is feeding a purely resistive load? Resistive load means current and voltage will be in phase with each other. Therefore, what is the power factor angle? 0 degrees. It is cos 0 degrees. We will call it as unity power factor. Now let us try to draw the phase R diagram here. You see, uh, this is main field flux always we are taking as reference. And the induced EMF will lag this flux by 90 degrees. So let me draw induced EMF which is lagging this flux by 90 degrees. Now the moment when the load is connected, this EMF will generate a current. We will call it as armature current. And that armature current is in phase with this voltage because the power factor is unity. Okay. So therefore, you see armature current is in phase with voltage, neither lagging nor leading. If this is the direction of armature current, I can draw the same is the direction of armature flux. So tell me now, this armature flux now is in phase with main field or exactly opposite with main field or perpendicular with main field exactly perpendicular with main field this is what we will call it as cross magnetizing effect okay so the nature of armature reaction is purely cross magnetizing in nature cross magnetizing means neither completely magnetizing nor completely demagnetizing it is exactly perpendicular that is completely cross magnetizing Main field direction, armature direction, both are crossing each other. We will call it as cross magnetizing effect. Now, where is the resultant flux is the question. See, I wanted to draw the same armature flux here. This is armature flux. Okay, the same armature flux. Now, this is main flux, armature flux. Therefore, can I say this would be the resultant flux? Okay, that would be the resultant flux. Now, let us try to draw corresponding EMFs. I told you already, induced EMF is always lagging the flux by 90 degrees. This is armature flux direction. Therefore, 
armature induced emf due to this flux will lag this flux by how many degrees 90 degrees lagging means clockwise this is armature flux phasor move in clockwise direction by exactly 90 degrees that is the emf i have to draw here this is ear what is mean by ear tell me this is ef ear means induced emf in armature winding due to armature flux now the sum of ef and ear this is going to be the resultant emf er now you can check resultant emf is lagging the resultant flux by 90 degrees understand or not okay so this is a phasor diagram for which kind of load unity power factor load and for unity power factor armature reaction is neither magnetizing that means neither rise in voltage nor demagnetizing that means nor drop in voltage it is cross magnetizing okay if it is magnetizing effect resultant flux will increase resultant voltage will also increase that is rise in voltage effect if it is demagnetizing resultant flux will decrease resultant voltage will also decrease that is a drop in voltage effect but this is neither magnetizing nor demagnetizing that means it is neither rise in voltage nor drop in voltage it is just cross magnetizing effect understand okay so there are certain definitions are there for angles i would like to represent those angles a little later okay this is for purely resistive load neither magnetizing nor demagnetizing it is a purely cross magnetizing so we discussed about three cases so far purely lagging power factor load purely leading power factor load purely resistive power you know unity power factor load but we know in practical applications power factor neither purely inductive nor purely capacitive or nor purely resistive power factor will be finite lagging and finite leading these are the basic types of power factors we will observe in industries in most of the cases we will observe finite lagging power factor best example induction motor 90% of world's power is drawn by induction motor only and the induction motor is a lagging power factor load an rl load we will be considering now okay let us understand uh, about this armature reaction okay all right now the next case here is that a generator feeding a finite lagging power factor load this is neither purely lagging nor purely resistive it is an rl load best example an induction motor that means current is lagging the voltage by 90 degrees or less than 90 degrees less than 90 degrees maybe 30 degrees or 40 degrees like that so let us try to draw the phasor diagram once again as i told you always we are taking main field flux as reference this is the main field flux induced emf is lagging this flux by 90 degrees this is the field induced emf very clear now current is now lagging this voltage or leading this voltage lagging this voltage because this is the voltage generating armature current so armature current will lag this voltage by some finite angle not 90 degrees this is a voltage and now you see this is armature current lagging this voltage by some finite angle okay i can say this is the power factor angle now if this is armature current then can i say armature flux will also be on the same line because flux is in phase with current this is armature flux now what i can do here is that i can resolve this armature flux into two components you see by using uh, basic trigonometry this is going to be one component of armature flux okay and this is going to be the other component of armature flux if i add this first component and second component together i will get this resultant armature flux now you tell me this second component of armature flux is in the direction of main field or exactly opposite exactly opposite that is what we will call it as demagnetizing armature component next this first component is in the direction of main field or opposite direction or perpendicular perpendicular this is going to be cross magnetizing flux component of armature flux therefore i can now resolve the armature reaction into two parts when the load is finite lagging 
द नेचर ऑफ आर्मेचर रियाक्शन ईज पार्शियली डी मैग्नेटाइजिंग एंड पार्शियली क्रॉस मैग्नेटाइजिंग ओके सो द नेचर ऑफ आर्मेचर रियाक्शन ईज पार्शियली डी मैग्नेटाइजिंग एंड पार्शियली क्रॉस मैग्नेटाइजिंग पार्शियली क्रॉस मैग्नेटाइजिंग ओके इट इज नेदर कंप्लीटली डी मैग्नेटाइजिंग नॉर कंप्लीटली क्रॉस मैग्नेटाइजिंग इट इज पार्शियली डी मैग्नेटाइजिंग एंड पार्शियली क्रॉस मैग्नेटाइजिंग अंडरस्टैंड सो दिस डी मैग्नेटाइजिंग विल ऑफर ड्रॉप इन वोल्टेज दिस क्रॉस मैग्नेटाइजिंग नेदर राइज इन वोल्टेज नॉर ड्रॉप इन वोल्टेज बट डी मैग्नेटाइजिंग इज ड्रॉप इन वोल्टेज सो ओवरऑल इफेक्ट इज डेफिनेटली ड्रॉप इन वोल्टेज इफेक्ट अंडरस्टैंड now let us find out where is resultant flux here resultant flux is always a sum of main field flux and armature flux you see this is main field flux phase r this is armature flux phase r now what i will do is the same armature flux phase r i will draw here yes this is armature flux now see this is armature flux and this is also armature both are parallel don't forget now the sum of main field flux and armature flux together can i say this is going to be the resultant flux okay when you know resultant flux and armature flux phasors can you draw resultant emf and armature emf phasors i told you this armature flux can induce an emf in armature winding that emf will lag this flux right lag means clockwise direction this is armature flux therefore the emf induced due to armature flux will lag this flux by 90 degrees always don't see above below like that always understand clockwise or anti clockwise lagging means clockwise anti i mean leading means anti clockwise this is armature flux therefore the emf induced due to armature flux will lag this flux by 90 degrees that is what i am drawing here so therefore this is ear can you tell me what is mean by ear it is the induced emf in armature winding due to armature flux next the sum of main field emf and armature emf i can say this is going to be the resultant emf er what is mean by er it is the induced emf in armature winding due to resultant flux and you can calculate there will be 90 degrees between resultant flux and this resultant emf okay resultant flux and resultant emf fine this is the observation with respect to finite lagging power factor load so what is the nature of armature reaction when the load power factor is finite lagging in nature yes it is partially demagnetizing and partially cross magnetizing in nature okay now let us understand what happens if the load is finite leading power factor load okay all right now the last case in armature reaction discussion is what will be the nature of armature reaction when a generator is feeding a finite leading power factor load finite leading power factor load means example is rc load one of the practical example is synchronous condenser an over excited synchronous motor is known as a synchronous condenser and a synchronous condenser will be operated at leading power factor okay so let us try to draw the phasor diagram okay now i hope you have enough idea so that you can draw phasor diagram on your own if you are watching this video pause the video try to draw phasor diagram on your own and then resume the video just check yourself okay now let me try to draw the phasor diagram i am always taking main field flux as a reference this is the main field flux induced emf is lagging this flux by 90 degrees this is a uh, field induced emf now fine this induced emf will generate a current known as armature current when a load is connected and as the load is a finite leading power factor load the current generated by this emf will lead this emf leading means you should go in anti clockwise direction right so current will lead this emf by finite leading it is not 90 degrees leading it is a finite leading 
now if this is the phase or for armature current then i can draw armature flux is also in the same phase now i can resolve this armature flux into two components once again this is one component of armature flux and this is the second component of armature flux if i add this one and two i will get the resultant armature flux like this okay now you tell me this second component is in the direction of main field or opposite direction of main field in the direction of main field this is magnetizing a component of armature flux because it is aiding to main field similarly this first component is perpendicular to main field therefore this is cross magnetizing component of armature flux therefore when the load is a finite leading power factor type what is the nature of armature reaction partial magnetization yes or not partial magnetization and partial cross magnetization okay a part of uh, armature flux is magnetizing in nature remaining part is cross magnetizing in nature okay done next uh, when you know armature flux direction then what about resultant flux see the same armature flux i wanted to draw here this is armature flux now what is the sum of main field flux and armature flux together this is going to be the resultant flux now draw the emf phasors also corresponding to that this phi f induces ef this phi a will induce ear that is nothing but induced emf in armature winding due to armature flux i told you induced emf will always lag the flux lag means you must move in clockwise direction so this is armature flux move in clockwise direction by 90 degrees i will get ear what is mean by ear this is the induced emf in armature winding due to armature flux so therefore it is a self induced emf now the sum of ef and ear this is going to be the resultant emf er and you can check definitely the resultant emf is lagging the resultant flux by 90 degrees so this is the complete phasor diagram when machine is connected to a finite leading power factor load so final summary points are very easy drawing phasor diagrams may look little hectic in nature but final summary points are always easy what are the summary points when load is a purely inductive load zpf lagging power factor armature reaction is a purely demagnetizing when the load is a purely capacitive zpf leading power factor armature reaction is purely magnetizing when the load is purely resistive unity power factor it is a purely cross magnetizing finite lagging means it has a partial demagnetization partial cross magnetization finite leading power factor armature reaction is partial magnetization and partial cross magnetization and don't forget that whatever the discussion we had so far everything is related to synchronous generator when you know the nature of armature reaction in synchronous generator motor will be exactly opposite why because generator will generate current motor will take the current so if you reverse armature current direction the same becomes motor armature reaction so let me summarize everything into a simple table okay all right let us summarize the nature of armature reaction in both generator as well as motor so far we discussed about synchronous generator what we understood for zpf lagging power factor armature reaction is purely demagnetizing for zpf leading purely magnetizing for unity power factor purely cross magnetizing finite lagging power factor partial demagnetization partial sorry partial cross magnetization partial demagnetization partial cross magnetization finite leading power factor partial magnetization and partial cross magnetization now let us try to understand the same thing in case of a motor the only thing you need to do is that in case of a generator armature current will be generated by the machine in case of a motor armature current will be absorbed by the machine therefore you have to reverse the direction of armature current 
when armature current direction reverses can i say armature flux direction also reverses armature flux direction reverses means magnetization becomes demagnetization demagnetization becomes magnetization that's all so therefore for zpf lagging power factor if generator armature reaction is purely demagnetization motor armature reaction will be purely magnetization because armature flux direction reverses for zpf leading power factor if generator armature reaction is purely magnetization motor armature reaction will be purely demagnetization coming to unity power factor in a generator it is a purely cross magnetizing cross magnetizing means this is the direction of armature flux this is, sorry this is the direction of main field flux this is the direction of armature flux 90 degrees now you reverse armature flux direction even though i reverse this, again 90 degrees is there that means it is still purely cross magnetizing in nature so unity power factor the nature of armature reaction in generator and motor both are same next coming to finite lagging power factor in a generator partial demagnetization partial cross magnetization now coming to motor this demagnetization becomes magnetization therefore partial magnetization and partial cross magnetization when it is a finite leading power factor in a generator it is a partial magnetization so in a motor it becomes a partial demagnetization so partial demagnetization and partial cross magnetization okay so this is about nature of armature reaction in both generator as well as motor so if you remember generator concept motor concept will be very easy anyway we will study in motors course once again but this is the way to remember at the same time okay you can note down this on your short notes and uh, whenever you are revising the subject you have to read this tabular column again so always remember lagging power factor will offer demagnetization drop in voltage leading power factor will offer magnetization rise in voltage this is for generator motor exactly opposite okay all right so so far we discussed about armature reaction concept from the view of phasor diagrams now i will consider not all the five cases we have taken five cases overall you see now what i will do is that i will take any one of the case here let me take uh, a finite lagging power factor case i will take this case and i will try to understand uh, what is the nature of understanding armature reaction physically from the physical machine diagram how to understand armature reaction okay all right now let us try to understand uh, how to observe armature reaction it may be demagnetizing or cross magnetizing or magnetizing how to observe armature reaction from the uh, physical aspects of the machine okay and there was one question based on this in one of the uh, ies examination also now look at this uh, i wanted to study about the nature of armature reaction for a lagging power factor load okay lagging power factor load so what exactly mean by lagging power factor load current will lag the emf by some finite angle okay suppose uh, if this is emf ef current will lag this emf by some finite angle we will call it as power factor angle i will represent the angles a little later okay right now you just understand the phasors only fine this is current lagging the emf by some finite angle let us say 30 degrees lagging power factor cos 30 lagging power factor that means 0.866 lagging now if i wanted to draw the same phasor diagram in terms of e, you know uh, waveforms in terms of waveforms suppose if this is induced emf waveform can you tell me lagging power factor means presently induced emf is maximum at this instant current maximum will come at the same instant or after 30 degrees yes lagging means after 30 degrees current will lag that means current will be delayed okay so current maximum will come after 30 degrees from the voltage maximum okay so we will get a waveform like this right so this is going to be armature current waveform 
this is the maximum point for armature current so current maximum will come after 30 degrees from voltage maximum so what you do is that first find voltage maximum rotate the rotor by 30 degrees so that you will get current maximum position so so look at this diagram assume this is the state or part of the given armature circuit okay so for simplicity i would like to consider one phase winding you can even consider a three phase winding also no problem let us say this is a and this is a dash inside this state r we have a rotor magnetic circuit also i am presently considering a cylindrical rotor machine and a cylindrical rotor machine will have distributed field winding yes this is the field winding and assume at a given instant this is the direction of a field current carried by rotor winding simple diagram based on the direction of current can you tell me what will be the direction of a field flux right hand thumb rule these three conductors are carrying the current into the plane these three are carrying the current out of the plane so field flux is in upward direction field flux is in upward direction means at this end flux is emitted therefore this will act like north pole okay this surface of the rotor will act like north pole and here it acts like south pole right so we understand the position of north pole and south pole in rotor but as it is a generator we have to rotate this rotor and assume the rotor was driven in anti clockwise direction at a synchronous speed okay and don't forget that this north pole will emit the flux this is the flux emitted by north pole therefore that is indirectly the field flux line now can you tell me based on the direction of flux flux is moving in anti clockwise direction now this field flux will link armature conductors therefore an emf will be induced in armature winding how to identify the polarity of induced DMF? Yes, the polarity of induced DMF can be identified using Fleming's right hand rule. Okay, and according to Fleming's right hand rule, magnetic field moving in anti clockwise direction is equivalent to conductors moving in clockwise direction. Conductors moving in clockwise direction means this conductor A will move to the right side, north pole will emit the flux. Now, central finger will show out of the plane, that is a dot polarity, okay. So, this is a dot polarity and this will be the cross polarity and presently can I say EMF is a maximum here. How do you know EMF is a maximum? Because the conductors are along polar axis of the machine because this is the axis through which the flux lines are passing, okay. So, therefore, polar axis. Okay, the axis passing through the poles, we will call it as polar axis or direct axis. That's why these conductors are having a maximum EMF. Now, I would like to understand what is the direction of armature flux. To identify the direction of armature flux, I need armature current. Because flux will be developed by EMF or flux will be developed by current, flux will be developed by current. Therefore, rather than maximum EMF position, I need maximum current position. We just studied that as it is a lagging power factor condition, maximum current will come after 30 degrees from maximum EMF. Presently, in state or winding, EMF is maximum or current is maximum? EMF is maximum. Therefore, current maximum will come into picture after 30 degrees. After 30 degrees means, can I say this north pole and south pole will rotate definitely after some time? So, this north pole will rotate by 30 degrees, south pole will rotate by 30 degrees. If north pole rotated by 30 degrees, I can say this north pole may come to this position. Please, everybody, please try to concentrate. This north pole will come to this location. And the south pole will also rotate by 30 degrees. Therefore, south pole will come to this location, anti-clockwise direct. So, this is the position of north pole and south pole after 30 degrees. So, this is the direction of field flux now. Now, field flux is nowhere here. Field flux rotated by 30 degrees. This is the previous position of field flux, but now rotated by 30 degrees. This is the direction of field flux. Now, this diagram is now representing the 
same case like previous one or after 30 degrees after 30 degrees therefore now emf is not maximum current is maximum now current is maximum and don't forget that i am talking about generator in generator polarity of emf and current both are same if emf is a dot polarity current is also dot polarity if emf is cross current is also cross now this is current maximum position when you know current maximum position now you can find out what is the direction of armature flux because armature flux is developed by armature current use right hand thumb rule armature current direction is available find out what is the direction of armature flux you see current is into the plane here out of the plane here can i say this is the direction of armature flux yes so this is the direction of armature flux okay and what is this one this is the direction of main field flux this is the direction of main field flux this is the direction of armature flux let me try to draw them in short so that we can summarize how armature reactions this is main field flux you see the direction and exactly perpendicular you know see horizontal this is armature flux okay now what i can do here is that i can resolve this armature flux into two components okay see this this is one component of armature flux this is the second component of armature flux can i say this one plus two vectorially is the total armature flux yes now you tell me this first component is in the direction of main field or exactly opposite exactly opposite therefore this is demagnetization this second one is perpendicular to main field therefore this is cross magnetization so this is how you need to understand for a lagging power factor load armature flux is partially demagnetizing and partially cross magnetizing suppose if it is a motoring machine what happens tell me if it is a motoring machine can i say armature current direction will reverse because generator will generate current motor will absorb current therefore this dot polarity becomes a cross polarity cross polarity becomes a dot polarity if this is a cross and this is a dot can i say this will be the direction of armature flux now i can remove the previous one if this is the direction of armature flux i can resolve once again armature flux into two components one will be this component other one will be this component now this is purely magnetizing this is purely cross magnetizing so if it is synchronous motoring machine for a lagging power factor you will get partially magnetizing partially cross magnetizing draw a short diagram so that you can understand so this is the way to understand the nature of armature reaction the nature of armature reaction physically from a physical diagram now we will solve a practice question okay now let us try to solve a simple question based on armature reaction that to physical diagram look at this diagram state r was shown rotor was shown and main field flux direction is given armature flux direction is also given okay now there are four options given uh, you need to identify first whether this machine is a generator or motor once you understand the type of the machine then you have to examine whether it is a leading power factor condition or lagging power factor condition if you remember in one of the class earlier i told you already uh, about the movement of stator field and rotor field in generator as well as in motor okay if you remember here you tell me which is a stator field and which is rotor field we know field flux that is nothing but the flux developed by rotor therefore this is rotor field this is a stator field right this is stator field and this is going to be rotor field and if you understand the direction of rotation definitely both fields are rotating in clockwise direction now will you tell me in the direction of rotation in the direction of rotation which field is leading and which field is lagging definitely rotor field is leading stator field is lagging yes or not i hope you are able to understand from the diagram clockwise direction in the direction of rotation rotor field is leading stator field is lagging understand tell me now whether it is a generator or motor we discussed this concept already 
rotor field is leading stator field is lagging this is nothing but a generator suppose if it is a motor stator field will be leading rotor field will be lagging i hope you remember we may we had a discussion already you need to remember these points okay otherwise you can't answer these kind of questions these are called as memory based questions if you remember this point in generator rotor field will lead stator field will lag in the direction of rotation suppose if it is a motor stator field will lead rotor field will lag okay so confirm it is a generator therefore the answer will be either a or b all right now the next thing is whether it is lagging power factor or leading power factor we have to examine for that purpose let me try to draw these phasors in a shorter format this is the direction of main field the same i am drawing here you see this is how the main field phasor looks like from the diagram and armature field is horizontal this is armature flux direction now what i can do here is that i can resolve this armature flux into two components okay you see this is one component and this is the second component will you tell me sum of 1 and 2 is definitely equal to resultant armature flux am i right and if you look at this second component it is in the direction of main field or opposite direction in the direction that means definitely this is going to be magnetizing in nature and if you look at the first component it is in the direction of main field or opposite direction of main field or exactly perpendicular to main field exactly perpendicular to main field therefore this is going to be cross magnetizing so tell me final observation is armature flux is partially magnetizing and partially cross magnetizing that to generator tell me for which power factor in generator armature flux is partially magnetizing and partially uh, cross magnetizing yes leading power factor so the final answer is it is a generator with leading power factor suppose when you draw the diagram if you understood that armature flux has partial demagnetization and partial cross magnetization then it is lagging power factor okay i will give you one more practice question same options but i will change the diagram you have to answer that question okay all right now look at one more diagram i gave you uh, this is a stator part this is a rotor part the two fluxes are mentioned very clearly phi a this is armature flux phi f this is a field flux both are rotating in anti clockwise direction so based on this diagram first decide whether the machine is a motor or a generator once you decided motor and generator then find out the nature of armature flux is it magnetizing or demagnetizing or cross magnetizing okay or both products are there so based on the nature of armature reaction find out what is the kind of power factor okay that's all simple question try to practice this this kind of question came once in ies examination did not appear in gate examination so far so it is an untapped area you can expect a question from this area okay all right so with this we completed armature reaction discussion in synchronous machine in the next class we will start our discussion with respect to equivalent circuit of synchronous machine okay